A tight game ensued with both teams cancelling each other out. Bruff's kicking game got Wakefield back into it with good field position, which made up for him getting a sin bin for descent again. Roby, the difference between the teams with some great runs. Much better performance from Wakey, more like it. P.S. Coot was god-awful. I mean, Danny Broth. Danny, Danny Brock. It's a problem, isn't it? It's because a huge problem. At what point does he just become it's not worth the bother? Well, it sounds like he actually was pretty good in this game when he wasn't mouthing off. Um, so I think, I think you know, there's, there's promise there. It's just about... What I don't get is why he's only getting a caution. This is two weeks in a row he's been simbing for descent. Should we not be taking a hard line with this now? It's not like he doesn't have, like... Past, past record of this. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think that, I think you're right. And and only, if only to stamp it out with other people, so it's not acceptable. Yeah, because it may. Yeah, we it should not... we should be we should be um, protecting our match officials as much as anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it just it just baffles me how he's not got a ban at this stage. Um, the the voting, the way the voting went, you know, between the Goldthorpe and the Man of Steel, really shows some differences in this one. So the the, the Goldthorpe went making some farge for Fita, whereas the Man of Steel went Roby Miller Johnston. So obviously there was quite a lot of players who had their moments in this game, but maybe um, maybe so that it's difficult to say exactly who stood out but Roby came up in what, what we've seen here as well um, from both the Wakefield fans who were there so obviously you know just look at Roby's stats I mean he was the only player with over 40 tackles and over 100 metres this week um, a nod to Tommy Makinson too I think he scored two tries uh, plenty of ground made so so he was showing some good form too I think those two players maybe stood out from, from me from what I've seen on this one what I've read and what I've what I've, I've, I've picked up um, so so well done to those two highlight moments do you know what so many of the tries from the from the from the clipped footage of this game were highlight moments um, people are slagging Coop for his his kicking game I think Saints do need to think of an option there about kicking maybe Danny Richardson um, you know that guy who was dead good at kicking last year um, oh yeah, I remember him. Uh, maybe him, but um, because Coop did a lot of the kicking in the first game and didn't really deliver much pressure either, um, so that's a question mark. But from the highlights, Coop's long cutout pass that was done with very quick hands. It was a a, a grab and t- a, you know a grab a, a take and pass, but that was a long pass. That was a cutout pass. That was really impressive. That that put Makinson through for his first try. Uh, it probably to me just about outdid what Ryan Hampshire did for Johnston's first try which was very similar but Hampshire I think had a bit more thinking time um, but what a finish by Johnston on that one flying one handed leaping you know what we yeah, very see impressive. all our wingers um, Johnston's second try was a brilliant flowing team move from deep for Trinity. It was a great try. Uh, and I think, you know, Bill Tufus was similar-ish. So, you know, some some flowing rugby league stuff from, from Trinity. What I would say is people who go down to Bellevue might not always see their team win, but they will see their team entertain because they have a physical front row um, who can bully the opposition. And then they have a, a flourishing, flowing back line off the back of you know Jacob Miller who's a really impressive player so entertaining stuff I think in the, in this game um, from all angles by the sounds of it but Saints just nipped the win with Louis, Louis McCarthy Scarsbrook going over at the end we nearly yeah. had our first golden point game nearly say closest with second closest we've come closest we came this week to it Okay, standings. Do you want to take us through the standings, Tim? Early days. But... Yeah, four teams have started two from two. Leading the way is the early surprise package, Salford, on points difference ahead of Wire, Castleford, and Saints. Catland, Lungan, and Hulkar are all on two points. Wigan have risen up to the mighty zero points after their deduction for cheating the salary cap and are in eighth place. Hull FC, Wakefield, and Huddersfield. Uh, all prop up the table alongside bottom place leads who have all lost two from two. Yep. Uh, stat line of the week, I think the one that jumped out to, to both of us when we were reading it was Braden Willie Army, wasn't it? Two tries, um, seven tackle balls, 197 metres, four clean breaks, and that clean game, that error free game for, from him, I think, uh, impressive. Yeah. Do you have a player of the week? <sighs> um. 
Mm, good question. Who's yours? Well, for me, it's pers- on a personal note, it's going to be George Williams from the games that I saw. Uh, he was instrumental in Wigan's win, I think. He was the standout performer on TV games, maybe from my cherry-tinted bespectacled eyes, but there you go. Outside the games that I saw, probably Jackson Hastings deserves a nod as well for being so central to all of Salford's points, either scoring them himself through the boot or the hand, or making the assist on Paul, the track. Paul McShane would be another one for me from, from a cast point of view. Yeah, fair shout. I think, um, yeah. And just his integral, integral agility, cer- you know, I integralness, yeah. whichever the right word is. You know, I certainly think these Man of Steel votings, the way they're going, are, you know, they come out after we've seen all these games and picked up on what's gone in these games, and they are reflecting what I'm seeing. So that's that's. Uh, I, I, That's good. I, I rate the way it's going so far. What about highlights of the week? So personally for me, Liam Farrell putting the polish on Wigan's win over Leeds was great. Um, but for the round as a whole, I think I'm going to go with Darnell McIntosh chasing down the Catalan breakaway and stopping Sammy Sony Lange just before the line. I think when that happened... Catalan was starting to take control and Huddersfield maybe still had a chance it kept that game a bit more exciting and I just think it was a great piece of play um, similarly maybe the, the shawl break and the Metautia ankle tap was another one they're, they're my three if I'm going to give three because I'm, I'm going to I did good there you go prediction Super Roo Fantasy League update so last week I went a perfect six out of six Tim so I'm at 83% overall this season so far you went five out of six so you're also at 83% from the games you've picked and Alan who we had on um, the week before the season started is at 83% too so we haven't had Sarah get involved yet on on this but as co-hosts overall you guys are at 83% too that's pretty obvious to see what about the Super Brew? Yeah Rod Hutchinson mate, moves top of the standings in Super Brew but there's no yellow cap due to the quirk of them Lumping next week's two games in with this week. Yeah, it's a bit weird, that is. Fantasy League, Tom Andrews holds on to his top spot. Second place, Stuart Wood, though, had the best week with 718. That's a really, really good score. Anything above 600, good. Above 700, you're, you're, you're top notch, I'd say. Um, so just to mention then that, you know, the Google form for those fan reviews, we've had some hilarious uh, fan reviews this week. We've had some insightful fan reviews this week and we've had some really thought provoking ones too. So that's been quality. Make sure you get those in on next week's games. Look out for the form. The links will pop up. It might be a bit weird la- next week because the automatic tweets that go out might clash with the Wigan against <laughs> Sa- against the uh, Sydney Roosters game. So um, if the last call tweet and Facebook posts come out before that game's finished, don't worry. There will be more time to get those those ones in on that game. We'll close the reviews down around midnight next week rather than a normal 10pm because obviously we want to get everyone's views in on what we hope is a fantastic World Club Challenge game. Let's move on now to other results. Right, now we move into the other results section, starting off with round two of the championship. It finished Toulouse 24, Witness 36. We got some views on this one, Mark. Yeah, we did. Um, And uh, Paul O'Brien said, great result away for the Vikings. I think everyone echoes that one. It was probably a little bit of a surprise result too, so well done to them. Uh, Suddenly 213 said, two wins in a row. I can't remember the last time. What a difference from five months ago. Inu, Cahill and the Good Chapel how to come back in as well. The Toulouse pitch has seen better days. Thanks for that, Gareth. Yep, thank you very much for that view. Uh, it also finished Barrow 22, Sheffield 24, Featherstone or Leeds 2, 42, Batley 14, Halifax 33, Lee 26, Rochdale 6, Toronto 58. Carsten got in touch about this one. Yeah, he said Rochdale defended very good for the first 10 minutes, but then it became a blowout score. Even with 12 men, Toronto were good enough to score two tries. Rochdale becomes my number one relegation candidate now. Yeah, John Wilkin also doesn't know how to keep his mouth shut. I'm surprised, shook in all sorts. But Toronto were... The, they just got the ball across the pitch in, in attacking position, side to side to side to side, and made space for a try eventually on it uh, every yeah, time. Yeah, I caught the last 10 minutes of this one when I got in, and it they just had options from so many different places. And they, that was that was just overwhelming for the defence. Also, Rochdale's ability to trust each other was completely lacking, but maybe it's their first game of the season. So uh, The first game of the season is quite a big change squad as well yeah. for them so it's not hugely surprising and the other result finished Swinton 12 Bradford 31 
Yeah, so four teams start two from two. Toronto, Sheffield, Witness and Bradford. Next on one win come Featherstone, Barrow, Lee, York and Halifax. Five sides are without a win or a point. They are Dewsbury, Toulouse, Batley, Rochdale and Swinton. Rochdale and Swinton already um, propping up things then, unfortunately, for them. Sheffield, yeah. though, two from two. We talked about it was a key start. Um, for Sheffield and they've they've really upset my prediction um, and, and got those wins so well done to them Challenge Cup round two Tim do you want to take us through some of those results or all of those yep, results it actually finished Fatto Heath 36 Lee Miners 6 Ovenden 18 West Bowling 38 Normanton 22 Haydock 32 West Hull 36 Bentley 0 Milford 22 Lock Lane of Castleford 28 Thornhill 20, Rochdale May- Mayfield 30, Drillington 14, Wigan St Jude 6. Is that right? What's that? The, the Wigan St Jude's. I thought they made it through. Oh, well. Some, yeah, they did make it through, so I don't know what's gone on there. Yeah. Uh, the BBC Sport website must have been wrong last night when I uh, put these into the rundown, Tim. I'm going to blame uh, someone else always. Millam nil, tw- Siddle 26, Dissington 14, the RAF 6, East Leeds 16, Dewsbury Moor 20, Underbank 26, Featherstone Lions 30, Waffbrow 8, York Acorn 9, Wigan St Pat's 28, P- the GB Police 20. And we did have a view on this one. Uh, just to go back to the Drillington 16, Wigan St. Jude's 20. So, so the Wigan side did go through there. Yes, Carsten got in touch on this game, which was, of course, streamed on the R-League app. He said, good start by Wigan and the police looked disconnected in the first 20 minutes. After that, they came back and made a nice cup game. The penalty count in the second half was awful. And for some reason, nobody wanted to kick. The Lion is one of the ugliest mascots I've ever seen. But Tara Jones was very good to look at. Hashtag political cult incorrect hashtag still true fair shout Carsten um, the penalty thing is because of the way the ground situated Carsten and you're probably not familiar with this but it happens at a lot of amateur games um, yeah. in England especially as more and more of them have lost their kind of nursery ground <laughs> areas around them <laughs> and are now just a pitch in a clubhouse um, with new houses getting built or railway tracks being so close to them or canals being so close to them and, and the like um, basically a lot of grounds don't have kick into touch for penalties because they'll lose all the balls um, um, or in terms of I think it's the where the Navy play down in Portsmouth they can't kick it one side because it would end up in the sea there you go so uh, on, on those sorts of grounds they just march them forward 10 meters as the like default and most Wigan fans will say that's maybe more than we get from some of our kicks to touch so uh, <laughs> so there you go and it um, depends on the ref depends on how theatrical they make it some some just go and plonk it down others do this weird walk thing where they sort of grab hold of the ball and cradle it and walk it the 10 meters <laughs> Fair. it's a particular feature of the amateur game Fair enough. Uh, yeah, so that's that's to answer that one, Carson. Really, um, we've got the draw for the for the we third have got round. The draw. That game, I I watched that game the early part before the um, Toronto game came on the TV, and um, it looked like Wigan Pats were going to romp away with it. So credit to the police for making it close in the end. Um, yes. So the third round of the Challenge Cup, the draw was held in Coventry. They didn't do themselves any favours in that no. third round, although picking one of the the best ranked sides that, that they could come up against and away from home. All 12 ties will take place over the weekend of the 9th and 10th of March. There should be streaming games on BBC Sport and the R League app, I would expect. Um, and obviously, the winners of this round will get the pleasure of playing against the Championship sides and some of the lower-ranked Super League sides from last year as well. So, um, so this is pretty exciting. So the draw, as it came out, is the Keefley Cougars will host Dizzington. Oldham, Oldham will host Castleford Lock Lane. Tato Heath um, will host Rochdale Mayfield, Mayfield. So we know that one of the uh, community club sides will go through there. Wigan mm-hmm. St. Jude's will host who Haydock, who I believe are the lowest ranked side left in the competition. So they've got a chance of um, of going to the fourth round again and getting a prime draw. Newcastle Thunder host the West Wales Raiders. London Scholars host the West- North Wales Crusaders. Hunslet host West Bowling. Workington hosts Siddle now Siddle obviously are one of the the brightest sparks of the of the amateur game so that might be a tough one early doors in the season for work 